Hey there, we're going to be using Bootstrap CSS today to make a responsive layout. If you don't know what a responsive layout is, you're about to find out. Um, and if you're brand new to HTML CSS, this is video number four, and I'll put a link to video number one over here, uh, where you can check those out and get a little familiar with HTML CSS first. Uh, but let's move right into it. Uh, what you're going to need to do to start with Bootstrap is you're going to need to go to getbootstrap.com and then click on the Getting Started link. It's been kind of having some server lag today, so I've had to refresh a lot of times. Bootstrap is getting all popular on us. Okay, um, you'll scroll down and you'll see Bootstrap CDN. If you just want to use the files from a CDN, which is a great way to do it, copy these two links and then add them right here into your header. There you go. So now they're both in there. Now Bootstrap CSS is on my page. I'm also going to take the script and I'm going to add it at the very bottom of my body tag. Um, and what that's going to do is you always want to put scripts at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, your page is going to wait for all the scripts to load before it shows your user the page, and you want that to be as fast as possible. We are keeping the style sheets up top because as soon as the page shows up, we want it to have style. We don't want it to show up ugly and then catch style later on. So that's why style goes up top. So as things appear, they have the correct style. And then the function goes down here because we can show them a page and not have all the function uh, move yet. It'll load up a split second later, but it feels a lot faster. Kind of the explanation on why we're putting it there. So now that Bootstrap CSS is on here, let me show you. I actually loaded the styles Bootstrap CSS. It is going to create tons and tons of CSS rules that help you do a lot of great stuff for you. Um, and I'm not going to get into all of what's going on there today. Uh, but what I'm just going to show you kind of how we start using it. So let's start by doing a three column layout. What we're going to do is div with a class of row. And then I'm going to go div column small six. Kind of what we got here. So you see it doesn't look like too much. Let me, I did make a couple helper classes here in my main CSS. Dark BG, darker BG, darkest BG. So I'll give you dark BG. Okay, it made something that spans halfway across the screen. Uh, what Bootstrap gives you is a 12 column responsive layout, which means it goes 12 columns across. And since I made it be, uh, six columns across, then no matter what size my window gets here, I'm always going to see six columns across until I get lower than small, which is as soon as I get extra small. And then it's going to fill the whole screen. This is called a responsive layout, which means it acts according to the size of the user's browser and device. Let's go ahead and add another one. You'll see more what we're talking about. Let's make this one darker BG. So now we have two columns here. And you'll see that these are going to do good. And as soon as my screen size gets small, boom, like an iPhone or something, they bump down to the next size. Let's go ahead and add another column. Let's go darkest BG. Um, and now it's going to start looping around because we have more than 12 columns. We have 666, uh, column of the beast. So I'm going to give each of these a 4. The reason they went with 12 is you can do groups of 3 if you divide it by 4. Uh, if you, you can do groups of 4, if you all give them a width of 3, you have a lot of options, a lot of divisibility with the number 12. So that's why they went with that. So now I have a three column layout and they each have the full background on it. There we go. Uh, what you can also do is you have widths of small, extra small, medium, large, extra large. And those are all based off your screen widths. So say I want this one to always, when we, bur when we merge down, say I want these two to still be half widths. What I can do here is start adding some extra small rules. So small, let's make u6, u3, u and 3. And when we go extra small, I want you to be full, which is 12. And then extra small, you're going to be 6, and you're going to be 6. These helper classes they build for you are awesome. So now we have 6, 3, 3. And when you bounce down, now this guy goes all the way across. And these guys both span. It's really good. You'll notice there's some problems going on here. It's because I did not wrap this in a container tag. Forgot to do that. 
that kind of gives you a little bit of a kind of sets your deal to your layout container. There we go. That fixes that. Always want it to be in a container tag. What a container does is it kind of gives you your your centered look and feel. So then I bounce down to responsive layout and that's excellent. That's kind of how you do column layouts. Now let's do a nav bar. Easiest way to do this is go to components on Bootstrap. You're going to be going to getbootstrap.com a lot um, because you're just going to be doing a lot of copy paste. I'm going to go to nav bar and there's an example of a nav bar. I'm just going to copy the whole dang thing. There's no way you're going to remember all this anytime quickly, so you just go with it. I'm going to create, let me see, what does this start with? It starts with a nav tag, so I'm going to create a header tag here. Then I'm going to paste that big mess in there. And I don't know why my Sublime always pastes messy. So there we go. Navbar, navbar default. These are all styling classes. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make the header. Now we'll see what happens here. There we go. There's my navbar. It looks beautiful. I'm going to wrap all this in a container tag again. Make sure to keep the indentations clean. Don't want nasty HTML people. And so now my container is actually going to have the navbar class. Keeping it full width. Uh, you know, I actually don't like my decision to do that. Let's keep it. Sometimes with Bootstrap, you have a lot of trial and error because you do have not memorized what all these things do. No, I'm taking it back. I am going to do it. Change plan again. Like I just said, a little trial and error. These are the things you put together once a site, so it's usually like four months in between implementation. That's a class container. Oh, that's my problem. I don't want that to have, I want the container to be inside. Ha ha ha, there we go. Container to be here. You're gonna have a class navbar, which is kind of what makes it do that full width page thing. The class of navbar gives it that full width thing. And now I have bad HTML. Okay, so for those of you guys who just got confused by what I did, we have our header with the class of navbar. And then inside we have a container, which gives us that centered look. And then it goes navbar default class, which we can actually take out. And there we go. What I'm actually going to do is give this container class navbar inverse. There we go. Actually, I don't want it there. One on the header. There we go. Got it. So your navbar slash defaults gives you that grayish. I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bit gray. I like navbar inverse because it gives me a black look. And then I put the container, which is going to keep all my stuff kind of in this centered look here. So my container is inside of my navbar class. And then I have my navigation inside. And I'll give this a roll banner, just since that's technically correct HTML markup. There we go. Now I got all my stuff. Now I'm going to delete some things I don't want. I don't care about this link drop down here. I'm just going to get rid of you. And I'm not using search, so you're gone. It's a lot easier to copy and delete later. There we go. Now I've kind of got my header. And now I've got my three column layout. And now I can add links and you'll see this drop down is not working. So we'll have to work on that. Mm, there's kind of how we pull in a lot of our bootstrap stuff. And you'll as you'll as you'll go, you'll find out there's a lot of times the bootstrap documentation might not give you the most clear example on what to do. Things might not work exactly as you hope the first time around. Um, you just got to keep moving. Let me show you some more bootstrap stuff that you can do. You can go components. See, it keeps I keep having to refresh bootstrap. It is not doing so good today. Bootstrap will give you button groups like that with that code. It'll give you a button toolbars. You can do all sorts of great stuff. Under the CSS tab, you get your more basic stuff like buttons. There we go. You can see it's either a button um, or an A tag with the class of BTN. Let's add some buttons here.
a class button button I don't have a href there so it's not doing it there we go you got to make sure you give it a color so this is button defaults you can go button primary which is kind of like hey this is primary out of all of them you can go secondary actually I don't think secondary is anything you can go danger which is error you can go warn warning you can go success which is green and so that's kind of how you get your buttons uh, they have a panel which is a very useful thing let me go back to components reload again panels panels are super awesome let me go here copy the panel so instead of giving this row you'll notice I mean this is pretty ugly I've just used the column or the classes to depict what's going on with the grid I'm going to remove these dark BG darker BG darkest BG because clearly those don't look very pretty and we're going to copy and paste in our panel these are a lot more often the kind of components you would use for a um, an actual web page widget one there we go that's looking much nicer I'm going to copy and paste that into my next one and you see they automatically resize to what you've chosen which is excellent and then they automatically bounce down when you minify to a smaller one another great thing about this is look what happened to my menu is it automatically shrunk down which is great my menu automatically gives me a menu button and so let's go ahead and add some buttons in here now do something there we go and they even do the nifty little looks another thing you can do on panel is you see panel defaults up here we can change these to panel primary we can change them to panel success all the same things apply to these panel danger you can also do the same thing to text um, this class is panel body I can go text danger there you go now it has red text and I can make this text success I can also instead of that I can wrap something in a span and give it a class of text success and it has the exact same effect so I can go black text and then success text that's kind of your basic introduction to bootstrap there's way too much to it to cover in one video so I'm going to leave it there uh, just enough to, to give you a dive in um, I copy and pasted a few components I've been doing some responsive layout you can see obviously I clearly have some stuff to add in here some adjustments to make things aren't working flawlessly there's still some things to be figured out and desired uh, but that's pretty much your intro to using bootstrap to create a great responsive layout